Welcome to the Genre Hustle, your virtual sci-fi fantasy writers group. I'm Anton. I'm Jane. I'm Chris. I'm Chelsea. I'm AP. And I'm Carter. And today we are talking about short stories. What is a short story? Well, I'm glad you asked, Anton. <laughs> <laughs> it is a story that is short. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we're today. done. No, but... Um, but right, but we've actually, we were talking about this right before we got on mic, how the definition of short story has changed. And a lot of it is because markets for short stories have sort of adjusted their definition. So mm-hmm. for me, a short story is um, in that sort of, 1,500 words to 7,500 words, although some places will accept up to 10,000. Mm-hmm. That's words kind of old school short. now, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is old school. And a lot of places prefer under 3,000. That's kind of their sweet yeah. spot. Um, but there's also things like micro fiction and flash fiction. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I've always heard like flash fiction is up to 1,000, and then like micro fiction, or some people call it a drabble is uh you're just making words like up now 50 to 100 i'm not making this up it's do some research <laughs> <laughs> that's also, that's oh, also a fanfic term drabbles yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know that term either but i'm gonna write a drabble now you should and then up to novelette which is kind of a new ish category um uh a novelette sort of takes up where the short story ends so around 7500 to 10 um 10,000 words and it goes up to about mm, 1500 to 1800 15,000 15, I mean, yeah. yeah. sorry 15,000 to 18,000 which which I'll point out for many years was very much in the short, st- right. short, yeah. short story short story yeah. so yeah things have definitely changed the mm-hmm. the trend is to shorter uh wor- smaller word counts on top of that you got no- novella which is yeah. 15 to 40? Yeah, somewhere around there. I think it's even 50, right? Because doesn't NaNoWriMo, they always say, if you've written 50,000 words, that's, you know. A novel. That's well, a, that's, that's, well, they, I think, I guess they do call it I mean, a novel, right? Nano. No, I know they what the NAS stands for. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It's Appreciate not that. No, no. Okay. National no. But they, I remember they, they give a, they give a whole long list of books that are 50,000 words, like The Great Gatsby and a bunch of <laughs> others. Well, The right? Great American Novel is, you know, 50 to 60. Yeah. So. so that's sort of what we're talking about. So really, I think it's anything less than 10,000 yeah. words. That's what us, we're going to most focus purpose. on today. Yes, yeah. For today's right. conversation. So why the hell do we write short fiction? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> What's the, the, the big question? It's so hard. Good God. Why do it? Um, well, we could go around. Maybe I think we all have written short yes. stories here. Absolutely. So we can go around and talk about it. Um, I got into it because I... I've always loved short stories and I found them so difficult when I tried to write them. And I wanted to sort of work on that from a craft perspective and teach myself how to do it better. It's a place where you can experiment. You can Mm -hmm. take massive risks with POV, with techniques and stuff. Whereas, you know, when you're writing a novel, and you take a big risk. It's, it's a, there's consequences. Yeah. Like, it's 100,000 words of risk. Yeah. Years yeah. of your life yeah. just thrown down the hours. tube. Yeah. yeah, so you want to write a piece of short fiction, have time run backwards, for example. If you fuck it up, who cares? You tried. And that was a weird week, and now you move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I mostly focus on short fiction sort of on the other end of that coin because like every time I've tried to write a novel, it has not worked out. Like, To me, writing a short story is sort of like recording a song and writing a novel is like conceiving and recording and producing a whole concept album. And Mm. unlike recording an album, you can't get anybody to help you with it. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, I don't know, it's always just like kind of daunting. Whereas like with a short story, you can kind of like conceive it and write it or just write it and work on it more after. And like, you know, the time investment and the risks you take aren't like such a huge sunk cost you can like sort of try stuff and if it works great if not then whatever that only took me like 20 hours instead of 20 exactly exactly yeah absolutely that's why i started too is you you get to get in and out of something and then actually finish it instead of work on something for years and years and right years. and sometimes you don't finish them and that's where i do <laughs> well <laughs> you work but, on them for years and years and years yeah i just like to keep writing but keep i working on them. i agree like i think you can just you can just write them and there's the, it's it doesn't carry the same consequence or the same weight as a novel i know for me i write them because it is fun to just do something small, like it's a character. And the way that I write them too, the the Varja stories, it is just kind of 
they're just episodic. It's like here he's doing Varj is here now and he's doing this thing and then he's over here and he does it and it doesn't have to be the same arc of a novel where it's like starts in one place and this is huge character development changes and stuff. It's just nope. Yeah, Varj is the same from yeah. story to story. But they're also a great palate cleanser. I mean, going back a little bit to novels. I mean, if you're working on one type of thing taking a break from that novel maybe in between drafts which is yeah. another reason I started doing short stories yeah was I can get away from that world completely those characters that idea everything about it and work on something completely different and I, mean, I, I know it's not actually working a different part of my brain but it feels that way that's actually why I started because I couldn't the secret of ice was just kicking my butt and I couldn't figure out like where this novel is going and it was and I'm just like I gotta just put it down and do something else for a while mm -hmm. for me it's like a way to to answer or to ask and answer smaller questions instead of like what would happen if mm -hmm. this ensemble of characters <laughs> launched on a cross continental journey <laughs> to fight some evil wizards and do this stuff like it, I get to answer the question of what if Beowulf was a lesbian <laughs> Which is a answer I'm working on right now. Thank God, I was novel. just about to say. I oh hope yeah, you're it's that. a novel. It's not. Though, no, Chelsea. no, no, no. Novelette. Okay, novelette. Novelette. Fair. Um, what if? What's the scariest thing I could think of for Murder Park? And it ended up being signing a contract you haven't read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So yeah, it just yeah, lets yeah lets you flex your muscles on smaller questions instead of big things all the time. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes to me that can also be kind of a challenge because I feel like I'm under pressure to write something high concept because I think you know with the short stories that I read there's this kind of big question being posed like this big philosophical question being posed and then my ideas feel like they don't add up mm, interesting well I think that you can definitely approach you know big questions and high concept stuff in a short story I think it just requires you to be very um minimalistic about it and and very um like you have to prune a lot, you know, you have to like really pare down the story to its its basic form and, and like leave the embellishments and mm -hmm. stuff aside. 7,500 words is tough. Yeah. Try 3,000 3, words. 3,000. Um, and I will just bring up one more um, point for a, a plug for writing short stories, <laughs> which is, um, and we'll get more into this later, but it, there is a market for it, especially oh God, for speculative so fiction. Totally <laughs> yeah, like there's actually lots of publications that will buy short stories or print them. Um, so there's another... <laughs> and it's totally of getting your name out there, too. <laughs> totally. Like if you're if you're an author and you want to get your name out there. Yeah, know, and, and that possibility is a really, really, you know, when you write a short piece and you send it out and it gets rejected and you send it out again, you while you're working on this two-year process of writing mm -hmm. your novel, you have a constant real world possibility of getting writing writing out. And I have I wrote took notes on this episode and I, I see in my notes I wrote, you have a a brief flickering candle of legitimacy when somebody, <laughs> when somebody publishes your story while you're like working in obscurity yes. for years and years. Somebody can go, hey, I like this story. You're a good writer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put yeah. this out on the internet and or whatever. And it's a morale boost to mm -hmm. even Huge. complete something while you're also wrestling with this massive novel. I mean, isn't validation like the whole point? It's, yeah, I'd say most of it. We don't yeah. like to talk about it out loud, but... <laughs> that's, that's our next episode. I'm yeah. doing this for the art of it all. Uh -huh. Right. Um, okay, so Chelsea mentioned this about the challenges. I think there are unique challenges to writing short fiction that are different um, from writing longer form work. So maybe we could talk about that. Like, what are some things we've encountered that we find really challenging? I, I have one to pick up on what Carter was saying, kind of go off on that is like, for me, one of the biggest challenges in writing a short piece is deciding what to leave out uh, of the yeah. story. <laughs> so like in a novel, you have lots of room to stretch out and like you can dilly dally on like a little side road <laughs> but um, you shouldn't you shouldn't but but oh, but you, you got to start can, somewhere you can do it sometimes and get a, and and develop things that way but like in a short story it's really you know i want to use the story that you uh sent in for uh critique this week but i won't because we, it's a really good example of this where you have so much uh, only so much space to to use and what details you tell about the character's life and what you leave out are super important. Mm -hmm. We might yeah. not need to know what supermarket the character shops at, but we certainly need to know if the character goes in there and buys a particular brand of olive. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like th that's for me, I'm always struggling. Yeah, with you got to make every word count. 
You you don't yes. you, you get no padding. Yeah, I think the the economy of world building is yeah. kind of a problem, like especially for speculative. Especially, mm-hmm. and I think especially for fantasy. So like urban fantasy, I think you 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 don't have as much heavy lifting to do because the setting is already pretty apparent. Um, sci-fi, you know, there's like you know if you're writing kind of like near future sci-fi, again, a lot of the world building is is done for you. Or, you know, you can use shorthand. Like, in The Court Magician, she uses shorthand. She just, like, she just kind of fills in the gap. Like, she she gives you a framework, and then you fill in the gaps. And it's like, there's no fluff. We know exactly what this guy's. We, we know where he is. We know where he lives. And, you know, you can just fill in everything whole cloth. I think there's another side of that, because when you're writing a short story and uh, someone's reading it, I think they, that reader will give you a bit of an allowance on the world building. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they'll go with you a little bit because they know it's short form. So if, if you kind of drop something in and don't fully explain it, they kind of hand wave it a little bit or just kind of go with it because it's, I mean, you always want to tie it into what you're saying in the story. But if it's just a, a small little name or a little bit of world building, they'll they'll go with it because it's a short piece. See, I I disagree. I when I read mm. like a short fantasy story, if I see like one line of like info dump, like literally one sentence, I'm like, no, don't make me do this. Like, well, I'm not saying info dump. I'm just saying like if if like in my short story mugs, I talked about the Sentinels and I didn't really describe them or like their society or what they do. But you're like, okay, so there's this force. They're Sentinels. Fine, I'm gonna go with it. And what you did really well in that story i think is you present the fantasy element or the world building element in a way that like the characters already know everything about it and you only talk about it from the perspective of that character i think i think what i'm talking about is the kind of world building that you can do in a novel where you can actually like take a paragraph here and there a couple sentences and do for lack of a better word info dumping like you can bring in some background in dialogue and you're going to roll with it because it's like a tiny, tiny piece of a hundred thousand word thing. You can't do that in a short story. You yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. I think in the short stories, um, it's, it's really all about the scope. You have to keep it very centered and focused. I know there was a, there was a anthology that came out, uh, knee deep in grit. It was a grim, dark short story, f- uh, anthology that came out last year or earlier this year. And all those stories, I, it was great because they were all, they're all fantasy short stories, and the scope is very focused. It's very contained. It starts right here in this town. It starts right there in the setting, and you just go with it, and you just go with the setting, and you go with the story. And there's, there is, to your point, Carter, there is no world building. There's no greater talk of the empire or the politics or the whatever. It's just kind of like, nope, there's four mercenaries, and they're coming over a hill, and we don't know what they're here for. Yep. Something's going to happen, and then go. Yeah, because that stuff is not important to that particular story whereas to a longer form no- novel you may want you know like the characters oh, will totally. have to have more so sure. in a way that's like the challenge but also kind of the luxury in yeah, a sense a of the short bit. stories that you don't have to get into backstory a lot of times yeah. like or just hint at just enough backstory yeah. to kind of connect emotionally with the reader. And I really love that about short fiction. Yeah. You have to get to the point. That's kind of it. I think you can't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. more, even more. They say that with novels, but even more so with short stories. I remember at Clarion, one of the most common comments that we always got back was, your story starts on page six or yeah. whatever, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. And That's I the classic. That all yeah. the time yeah. because. God damn it. Because, again, it's about reader expectation, too, is um, in a novel, the reader's like, okay, I'm going to go with it. Let's see where it's mm-hmm. going. I've got 120,000 words to get through. In a short story, it's like you have to even more so hook them on the first line. Mm-hmm. Or with the title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. I think that titles are titles. super important. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. titles. I mean, titles are hard enough with novels, but at least oh. that's kind of like by committee once you get down the traditional publishing path. But titles for short stories are just tough it is tough yeah. except for carter of course carter's so good with titles <laughs> but yeah the best piece of advice i received about titles is that think of the title as basic kind of like the first line of your short story mm-hmm. because you have so little room um the title is real estate space. i never heard it that's good title. i like that right? yeah i think I, yeah. I gave you this advice last week in critique so this yeah. is so from my mfa program my one of my professors david jouse who is a really good he was a really talented short story writer and he told me i was struggling 
for a title for one of my stories. And he's like, oh, what I always do is I just read through the story. I find the most interesting and evocative line. I make that the title and then I remove it from the story. Oh. And I'm like, oh, oh. and that has worked for me Perfect. several times when I was really, really stuck. That's a boss move. It, yeah. It's pretty, it, it, it leads to some arty titles too, which yeah. I kind of like, like where you're just like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm evocative. intrigued now I want to yeah. read this. It's a very powerful thing to do. Um, before we move off the challenges of short fiction, I also want to like point out one more and kind of push back a little bit on some stuff that was said earlier. Even though you have this economy, et cetera, et cetera, I feel for mo- in most cases, Varja aside perhaps, or that type of episodic <laughs> thing, you Thank still you. need a complete character arc in a short story, mm. which is in some ways way more challenging in a short story because you have very little space and very little time and maybe you're not starting the story on the right at the right spot but the character still in 3000 words or whatever it is has to change and yeah. grow or something something has to be there for Which the reader is super to hook hard onto. to do if the story yeah. happens over like 15 minutes but like, yeah geez. so this is your challenge yeah right? and, I would, so, and i would push back on your pushback to say that there's <laughs> there's, there's there's arc and then there's arc so there's arc with a big a and there's arc with a little a because i think as with everything in the short story the arc, arc with a c the, and arc the, with a ch don't don't <laughs> don't start with me zervi i'll come over there i will come over there <laughs> is i think with everything in the short story it the arc just also has to be it just has to be condensed. It's got to be smaller and to the point. But yeah, of course, condensed, there's the arc. Yes, and- but it has to be there. You can't have the character start and end in the same spot. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, there's no rules to writing fiction, but I think if you Except look at most, don't be boring. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're doing it well, like the arc, the, the character doesn't have to go from being this whore. You know, the it doesn't have to be the character go from being this villain to being this you know pious person. It doesn't need to be glorious in that way. I, I but think it that, does need that counts for a novel too, though. So like, yeah. I don't. Th- again, it does. It's not about the degree, but yeah. Sorry, we're getting a so, little <laughs> into the here. Well, but I think that ties in. I mean, Vonnegut said, "Start as close to the action as possible." Was he talking about short stories or novels or both? But it definitely applies to short stories because like we said, it's so condensed start as close to that actual character change as you can. So like, you know, it's coming, you know, figure out how they got there and maybe hint at it a little bit outside of the story. And they're maybe three steps away from that happening. And so you take us through those three steps. And I think character change can be, um, really subtle. I think that's sort of where maybe Anton was going with his little A arc. Um, Is that (laughs) the character can be really, really subtle. And it can be as as subtle as the character makes a decision that they wouldn't have made before, or they have a revelation or new understanding of something that they hadn't had before, right? Agreed. Um, Whereas in a novel, that maybe wouldn't be enough. You want a little bit more... I also think if there's ever a time to break rules, it's in a short story, you know, it's like, I agree. Like for example, you know, a cool uh, idea to sort of subvert the whole character arc expectation is to do a story where the character stays the same, but the whole world changes around them and they don't know how to deal with it. That kind of thing. Or the Um, revelations given to the reader instead of the character. That's That's what I was about to say. Like, Yeah. yeah, the tragedy. Exactly. I think one challenge in a short story, and this is something that Chelsea has said before in the past, um, the uh, challenge of writing to a theme without writing a fable. Mm. I think a lot of times when I write a short story, um, at least maybe in the first draft, it, it comes out kind of feeling like an Aesop fable. It's like, you know, like you, you sort of set up this moral or ethical or kind of decision point. And then like, it, it feels like I'm tr- trying too hard to, tell a lesson or something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like a lot of a lot of short stories it it feels like the pressure is to make it yeah high concept or Mm. teach a lesson or something like that and i think you know to maybe go back to our setting episode um maybe that's where you start to use setting and as briefly as possible obviously to start to work in theme as opposed to having a you know, being spoken by the characters yeah and i love like ambiguity and and stuff so i feel like sometimes i like fail myself in that way by like writing a short story that's too on the nose thematically or something. And it's tricky because you only have so much space to be ambiguous, you know? So, I mean, we talked about um, in our writing gripes episode of last season that, you know, writing to a theme and having, uh, it was, it was your gripe, Chris, you know, 
<clears throat> when you have characters that are just parroting some kind of moral lesson and it's that fable like quality i think in a short story i as a reader find that a little more palatable i'm not necessarily looking for that but because it's a short story like fables and fairy tales and all that i buy it as a short story not, as a novel i can't yeah do that. you don't want to commit to yeah. something that's and i'm not like, saying that's the type of short stories i like to read but if it's in a short story form i think it's a much easier pill to, mm-hmm. for me to swallow so it sort of goes back to the risk thing. It's like you you, you can mm-hmm. kind of, you can try this stuff and you can try something that usually doesn't work and see if you can make it work and that kind of thing. Yeah. So all the challenges are actually good things and we should just write a ton of short <laughs> stories right. all the time. So any tips for how to maybe overcome some of these challenges we've talked about? Yeah, please tell me all your tips, guys. <laughs> well, because they're so short and you can kind of get in and out so quickly, you should just try a bunch of different things. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. just you have an idea, you just, you know, write it out, see what happens, show it to some people, get some feedback. And, you know, if it doesn't go anywhere, it's like like Carter said, it's a few hours and not years off your life. Yeah. yeah. I know for me, I keep the number of scenes to a minimum. So I don't, if I'm going to write something, I know it's going to be 7,500 words. You're not going to be gallivanting across the continent kind of thing. You're in three spots, maybe four spots. God, even four sounds like a it, lot. Four is a lot. Yeah. But I'm just saying, because the transition, it's, you know, you're taking up real estate. You got to explain why you're there, what's happening. You know, I again, like, I'm, we're not saying that you can't have four. No, of course you can have a dozen. Tough. You can have four dozen. Yeah. I mean, there's no right number, but I'm just saying, generally speaking, like I was thinking for, um, what's the, what was the one you just mentioned? The mugs? What was yeah. The, mugs. Mugs. That's literally one, one scene, one, one play scene over the course of three it's hours. It's like a one act play. It's like yeah. a one act play. Yeah. You can spend a lot of time, but I know when I'm writing the Varja stories, I'm like, okay, I need to be conscious of there's a setup, you know, there's a beginning, a middle, and end. So there's a setup, there's a twist, and then there's a, you know, climax. Well, like for, like the last Varja story that you submitted, I think one of the smart things that you took away from critique was, oh, maybe I should start the story here. Yeah, totally. So that's what I did. Absolutely. Exactly. So instead of like, yeah, which if you remember, it was actually like three (laughs) stories, and it's like, then it went down to two, and now it's down to like one, so. Yeah, but that one scene is rocking. And it's actually, it's literally just two scenes. It's outside the hut and inside the hut, so. Well, then they go back outside. And then they go back inside. So, but it means basically one place, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To AP's point earlier about, um, you know, it only takes a few hours to write down a short story, um, especially a short, short story. That's why I've gotten into flash fiction. Recently. <laughs> totally, right? it's like a thousand words. I mean, you it's can like do that in an hour, kind almost. of, right? But um, I find that the other sort of bonus of a short story is that revisions are so oh, much God, easier no, totally. because yeah. you can hold the whole story in your head so while you do it all in one sitting instead of with the novel, I find I have to re-immerse myself in the world and blah, 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 and what's happening, right? And it's a huge sort of operation, but a short, so I, I've no, really appreciated that. That much. exact totally. thing is so awesome. Like yeah, I've been, no, I've definitely. been like, I've been sort of, trying my hand at flash fiction lately and i submitted one to critique a few weeks ago and it was like somebody was like oh like move some of the characterization up front and it was like okay i will literally do that right now <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> while you're telling me to do it i'll just fix that and right i'm now. done <laughs> and it's done <laughs> and you save on printer ink you know yeah. yep. if you're printing it out and doing it by hand it's a lot shorter well i mean that's one of the things like when you write short fiction again you can hone your craft for writing novels. I mean, short fiction in itself is a path on its own. Like you, it's not necessarily like a proving ground for writing novels, but right. but all of the things that you bring to bear in a short story, like especially like talking about revision, you know, yes, it's really hard to hold a whole novel in your head and and see that as a whole, but I do think the more if you write 20 short stories as yeah. you do it, mm you will start to be able to apply that type of thing to your novel. Maybe you can't, you know, necessarily hold the whole thing, but you can hold the first act in your head. And it, I don't know, it, for me, it's like those bite-sized moments of like figuring out a problem, solving the problem and completing something Mm -hmm. is worth it just in of itself as a way of sort of like allowing you to go, I can do this with a bigger thing now. And does anyone else think that like scenes or chapters in a novel are kind of like short stories and you kind of treat them the same way? You're like, okay, I can cut a lot of this stuff out because it's... Yeah, but again, to Jane's point is you have to have all these through lines and stories. Like, yeah, Yeah. you have to be conscious of like where it all fits. So the short story, it's so contained. It's really 
pleasant. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's, nice. That's a nice thing about it. What I find difficult is really honing in on um, the sort of the emotional moment or the payoff. Yeah, and and having that resonate with the reader um, because you have so few chances to to do that. So I'm trying to think of like good uh, if if you've sort of encountered good advice around short stories. Um, when we did at the last writing retreat, sometimes we'd go on a writing retreat and we did some really interesting exercises out of the steering the craft um, oh, book so that yeah. Chelsea brought in. Um, yeah. I th- for me, those are like short story sort of ideation exercises. So, so, yeah, some of those prompts are really interesting. And I think by, because it's stuff like, Write a story that's all dialogue. Write a story that has no dialogue. Write a story that has, I think she said, like one of them was no punctuation was or, no, yeah. or no pronouns. Like there's some really interesting things in there. And by enforcing like limitations in certain key ways, it, you know, it frees the mind and others. And with the no punctuation one, like, you know, yeah, then we read them out all out loud and everybody came up with just such random yeah. crazy things. But so things. evocative it was and so emotional. Cool. Yeah, it was it was kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, so like one of my struggle points is where do you get ideas? And sometimes like it's, you, you know, just take a step back and, you know, think about the craft in a different way. So what if there was no punctuation? Well, going back to what you had said earlier, I mean, you said that you were asking yourself questions and you can answer those questions in a short story. So you can say like, what if we were all half insects? What if, I mean, you get to like <laughs> which, the very <which> nature. <laughs> which, top half. Up to you. <laughs> Dealer's choice. Uh, but you get to the kind of like the really Ew. speculative nature of what mm. you're writing. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. what if this? And then you can kind of explore it and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Without the burden of having, like Chris saying, of spending two years writing 100,000 words. Right. Get to well, like, going, what's the character? What's the plot? Yeah, what's exactly. Like, like, oh, you getting just, lost on thing. a Wikipedia yeah. research tunnel of. <laughs> Yeah. And what I like about short stories is that you don't have to have a fully developed, yeah. Yeah. right, kind of idea. It could be, I mean, for me, a lot of my stories come from just images and random little stray yeah. thoughts. Like um, the story I sold um, to Flash Fiction Online, Mr. Buttons, <laughs> Mr. came from a dream Buttons. where I felt so terrified, right? Like I was that little kid and I was terrified. I woke up just terrified. Um, the other one, uh, which right now it's called Prophecy of Dogs, came from one night in the middle of the night. I woke up and I thought I heard my mom's voice. And my mom's been dead since 2005. And I was like, whoa, wow, what if it really crazy. was my mom? Right? And, and that's how that kind of starts. So a lot of, I think, story short stories allow you to explore those kinds of mm, subconscious, liminal, interesting spaces that a novel just isn't the right structure for. 100%. Uh, the, the other day, I was writing with Chris at the Bourgeois Pig, and something happened to me slash us, oh, and I immediately sat <laughs> down and wrote a short story about yes. it. Wait, what happened? There was, <laughs> there was just a gentleman that was very strange and really wanted to stare at me the whole time. And was it Chris? It was kind of dancing. <laughs> No, it was you. <laughs> I'm staring at him right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it just gave me this feeling. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna write something, and I just sat down and did it there immediately. You go. Look at you. Love that. Yeah. A lot of times, I just think of like one line or like one phrase, and like if I have enough like writing juice, I'll just like sit down and start. Yeah. Kind of going with it, and I think I think dreams are a really good one, especially if you can like get into the habit of writing them down that's definitely i started just carrying around like a little tiny notebook with me and like just oh, jotting we down. Saw, is that we what you've been writing in this whole time? our listeners i thought he was complaining see. about us <laughs> <laughs> You're, yeah. I thought, yeah i thought those were notes for the secret police <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm working on this short story now called kill my podcast <laughs> But no, I, I think, yeah, you can like just sort of like take one little shred or one little seed and plant it and just sort of go crazy. And like we've been saying over and over, it's like you can 
you can do that stuff with a short story. You can take that risk and see what happens. Yeah, I do the same. I have a Google Doc that I just add stuff to. Whenever, just like brain vomit. Like, if it's yeah. a dream, if it's something that comes to me, and then I'll go back and read it sometimes and be like, I don't even know what this is, <laughs> what this means, totally. but it's fine. The downside of that that I found is once you start doing that, you end up with this crazy backlog of story ideas. Yeah. But, that, yeah. but you should have that. You should always just have yeah. a list of stuff that you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. I agree. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Carter, something that you said just really resonated really quick. Uh, what, like kill my podcast? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, Yes, too. I have a feeling you're probably feeling me out for weaknesses. No, uh, <laughs> you said, like, find that little scrap or that little seed and plant it and see where it goes. Um, it's an opportunity for you to try on pantsing as opposed to plotting. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. Because, like, right now I'm working on, like, a, a short story in the Tarotmancer universe, and my what if was... What if Beth found a magical baby that she had to take care of for an afternoon? <laughs> and what would happen? For an afternoon, that's it? Yeah, it's a, what about, are the consequences? about a day. The bar is low for Beth, okay? Yeah. The bar is low. <laughs> yeah. Her maternal instincts she are not, not strong. <laughs> She's not prepared for this. But, you know, I, I just kind of started writing it, and I have no idea where it's going to go. Yes. Like, I love that. I think I know what the ending is, but I have, like, two or three options. And sometimes, like, you know, after working on revisions and working on high level structure mm-hmm. and working with this big whiteboard and my color code and then trying to keep my kitten from running onto the whiteboard and then erasing my notes, which did happen. She's uh, an editor, I see. Yeah, but, but she like did not, she's just not as experienced <laughs> as I really need. So, mm. um, but yeah, like after having to do all that really high concept stuff, it can sometimes feel like the creativity gets sucked out of the process and yeah. so it's nice to be able to turn to something and be like what's it like just to write yeah <laughs> and oh that, that, this like this that's what it's like that goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the whole like i need to take a break from my novel so let me just go yeah. write this other thing that doesn't take yeah. all of my brain yeah mm-hmm. i was gonna say a, a big uh big tip that i've gotten for short stories which goes back to something jane said earlier you have to have a good title and like i mean Maybe some people who have name recognition and stuff can get away with like untitled or something, but you have to have a good title. And if you don't have a good title, you have to have a good first sentence. Oh, yeah. I think like so often when I'm like looking at markets for short stories and stuff, I'll like poke around the ones that they have published on their website and like I'll read like the first sentence and like it, it's kind of like 50 50, but I always know from that first sentence if I want to read the story and maybe I'm just like, picky or something but it's like you can tell it's like oh yeah like this this has hooked me or it hasn't and it's like with a novel you're already planning on investing a ton of time to read it with a short story it's like you know like right. i, I, I want to know now if i'm going to read this right so it's, it's, like, it's hors d'oeuvres versus a full meal yeah totally and it's like i mean there's some short stories that like you know i, I would never have read if they didn't have an awesome title i have this example um this short story that I just randomly found in some zine, it's by Stanley Donwood, who um, is apparently a album cover artist. He did like eight Radiohead album covers, so that's kind of interesting. Wow. But I, I found this uh, random short story he wrote, and um, the title of the story is Four Insignificant Bicycle Crashes in Diminishing Order of Interest. Oh, and wow. I, like, I read that huh. title, and I was like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And so, like, you know, sometimes even if, like, you're a little iffy on, like, your themes or your characterization or whatever, like, if you can come up with, like, an awesome title or a kick-ass first line, then, like, write that story because somebody will read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good advice. All right. So now you've written a short story because you've followed our excellent tips on how to write a short story. Now what do you do with it? Well, and I think our world right now is primed for short stories because we have so many other ways, so many new ways of consuming them. I get... Uh, beneath ceaseless skies oh, delivered to that. my email yeah. you can go on amazon and so this is one of my favorite things to do i get paid and then i go to amazon and i find like four or five short stories all for 99 cents each mm-hmm. and then i buy them all and then when i get home they're all on my kindle oh. yeah and there are podcasts where someone yes. with a nice accent will read a short story to you Yes, I agree. I love the how so many publications have started doing audio versions mm-hmm. yeah. of their short stories. Or you can it's get a wonderful. short story printed out at the library. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The right. downtown LA library. Yeah. Yeah. There's, There's a machine like, at hey, the entrance. You want a short story? Nice. Here you go. I did not know That's that. That's free. So, cool. so there's definitely a market out there yeah. for your short story. 
Yeah. Uh, so how do you find them? How do you find them and how do you submit? So we actually uh, talk much more about this on our tools uh, episode where we go into things um, like um, specifically for short stories. But I think one th- place to start is sort of what we've just talked about is find the markets that you like. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just go and explore. There's tons of stuff online. Go to the library and just kind of see, like, do they have a submissions page? And almost all of them do because yep. <laughs> yeah. they're looking for stories. And they'll tell you exactly what length yep. they're looking for, yep. what genre they're looking for. Mm-hmm. It's very specific. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then once you kind of get like your favorite markets, you'll have a much better sense of, um, you know, oh, I think this story is going to be a really good fit for this because they like, you know, fantastical stories with strong character driven mm-hmm. action or or what have you. Um, there's also online things, uh, Submission Grinder, Duotrope, um, other places that just list markets. The SIFWA, Science Fiction Fantasy Writers of America, will periodically, every month, they have a um, blog post that says, hey, here are the all new spec fic markets that have come online in the last month. Um, so you can check that once a month and see what's new. Yeah, and there's also like anthologies that pop up a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Every totally. once in a while, I'll, I'll take a swing if I like see an anthology with like a sort of interesting theme or topic. I'll just like try to write for that basically and send it out. Uh, I had one like minor success. I saw this magazine was doing an issue of like modern Lovecraftian style horror and I wrote a story for it and they liked it. So that was cool. Um, and then I've also tried this like 20 other times and been roundly rejected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess we can't actually talk about this without also talking about rejection. Yeah. A well, little before we get to rejection, bit, yeah. also check Facebook groups, check, mm. you know, Reddit, any forums. Uh, people will always talk about when submissions are open. So, you know, just a quick online search. I also would just say like everything is available online, obviously, but um, you can always go to a bookstore. Yeah. And like, like like my local bookstore, Skylight Books on Vermont um, in Los Feliz, they have a whole rack of magazines and zines mm-hmm. and stuff. And a lot of them are literary. You can find stuff um, locally there as well. You know what I mean? So like it's, it's great to go online. Absolutely. I do it. That's what I do. But I also like to support my... My local bookstore, yeah. brick and mortars, yeah, and like the local groups, you know, like yeah, made definitely. in LA and stuff, yeah, yeah. stuff made out. in LA, so, media, yeah. yeah. Um, but so, yeah, we should talk about rejections. Yeah, we bit. should talk. Um, oh, yeah, and and maybe that can also be folded in with a discussion of submission strategy because I think we all have different you know, ways of thinking about where I send things to and how I prioritize. Well, I think one, I think this is one, Jane, I think you kind of started this in the group, but I think a lot of us are following this now where we fi- <laughs> we identify the zines we want to publish in that have the quickest rejection time. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and we send them there first. So we get that out of the way and then we move down the line a little bit, you know, not naming names or whatever. Right. But and what's, it, what's the yeah. current record? 17, 17 minutes. minutes. 17 minutes. Woo! Damn. I think that deserves a prize of some sort. I can't even fathom that. I know. Almost. But that's great. Actually, you want that because that means that they're not holding onto your story. A lot of pl- these places don't accept simultaneous submissions, which right. means, right, you can't send the same story to two different places. So the quicker you get that rejection, the quicker you can send it out to a new place. And get so, another rejection. And get another, exactly. Yeah, and that's a rite of passage. Like, writer, we t- it's talked about ad nauseum, right? But like... Every single amazing, successful writer that you idolize and love, their work has been rejected so many times. Hundreds, it's, it's thousands, hard to maybe. fathom. Yeah. Um, I know, like, I have a couple of short stories that are about ten rejections so far. Carter, I know you're Just in a double it. digits on one. Like, mm-hmm. it's part of it. It is. I mean, there's some record hold, right? Like, there's one person on um, a forum that I'm on who's like at 52, I think, on for one, one story. story. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Which I'm like, wow, you found 52 I know, markets. That's yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> list them, uh, please. <laughs> but it's over the course of like six years. Like, you know, he right. sort of keeps sort of submitting it. Um, so yeah, there's a. I also my submission strategy is fast rejection time and um, paid. Like yeah. I always target Stuck the there. higher paying markets first because I figure, you know, why not? If I sold it to a non-paid market, that kind of just makes me think maybe I could have gotten paid for right. it. Yeah. Right. 
So I'm, I'm kind of of two minds on that. I totally agree with Jane, who has actually gotten paid for stories before, <laughs> um, on the fact that, like, I think you've put it as, like, SFWA eligible, paid markets deserve the chance to decide on your story. To say no, to, to reject no me, or, yes, or they deserve the chance. My <laughs> other line of thinking on it, and I've kind of go back and forth between these is like as a pretty new writer i've got like two very small publications so far i feel like i need more you know entries on my query letter so like to me sometimes i'll i'll target non-paying markets that really fit the theme of the story or who have other published stories that i think are good um even if they're not going to pay me um Mm. so that i can hopefully you know kind of hit the bullseye with it and, and be able to add that to my, like I've been published here. And so th- I, I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm going to just like, I don't know this for a fact, but I don't think that, especially for short stories, I don't think having a bunch of stories on your, on your query or your, you know, your letter to their, your little email intro matters at all. No, I don't think so. Cause I don't think they even read it until after they look at the story. I agree. I think and it's only when they're interested in the story, then they might look at the cover letter. Yeah. And some places letter, don't yeah. even have cover letters. Yeah. And, yeah. and I also think like, and everybody has their own sort of thing, but like everybody is a new writer in that sense of like, like at some point. And it's like, you want to like value your work. And I don't mean that like, it doesn't, it's not valuable to send it to unpaid submissions but like in my opinion if you look if you look at the amount of hours you spend carter you you've you've earned the right to get paid for your work whether or not somebody's gonna pay for it who knows but um i don't know where i'm going with this but (laughs) I, i mean i think you bring up a really valid point but i do think that everyone's goals are different and it's just important to remember that and my that's goal true. is very very specific james is um, trying to make that money i'm just trying to get yeah, that, that dollar sweet short that, story that money sweet <laughs> sweet beer money i'm definitely only in it for the money too i'm just not sure how to get the money <laughs> exactly i don't know if you have to like because i mean there's always the line of thinking where like if you do something for free everybody expects you to do it for free all the time you know so yeah. i don't know i don't think yeah. that's the case for short story markets though because everyone knows that there's some markets that are like i could see submitting to a super prestigious you know like if the new yorker was and they would never do this but let's say the new yorker was like we're gonna have a short story edition but we are not paying any right then that might be a case where i'm like well it is the new yorker and they have enormous mm-hmm. distribution and reach and publicity <clears throat> But I probably still wouldn't do it. I don't know. But <laughs> but right. But you you're kind of weighing those factors yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think about this a lot. Like what what's worse, not publishing a story at all, or publishing a story and not getting paid for it? Oh, I. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to me, totally. it's obvious. To, but that's just my. That's just me, right? That's my decision. I think it's different for everybody. I mean, personally, like I, the fact that there are so many places now where you can get your story out into the world is amazing. So, yeah, I guess... You know, you've got a story, you know, find a place to submit it to and read their submission rules carefully. Oh, my gosh. That is such a good point, AP. I know I've messed that up once or twice. Same. We've all done it. We've all done it. We've all done it. We've all also, done it. get the editor's name spelled correctly. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. A lot of times you can look that up. It's yeah. not hard. It's I not mean, you can good. just say dear editor. You yeah. can. Like, yeah, editor. If it's not written, this is the editor. And a lot of places have multiple readers and multiple yeah. editors, you know? So, but yeah, so just read yeah. those carefully. Take your time. Mm-hmm. It's not a sprint. But at the end of the day, you can just resubmit it somewhere else if you yeah. mess up. If it says PG-13, Control F search for <laughs> fuck because you probably wrote it a lot if you're me. <laughs> so on that note, what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done in a submission? Send no. it to us. We want to know. And we'll share ours. And then we'll share yours. Yeah, we will. And we'll share <laughs> but, yours. But, we'll you, but you first. Yours. <laughs> so that was the episode. This has been the genre hustle. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Genre Hustle. You can find us on our website, www.genrehustle.com, on Twitter at Genre Hustle, or on Instagram at Genre Hustle. Our podcast is available on all major streaming platforms, including YouTube. Be sure to like, subscribe, and send any feedback or suggestions our way. See you next time.